For the system of capacitors shown in the figure below, find the following. Let C1 equal 1 microfarad and C2 equal 2 microfarads. A. Find the equivalent capacitance of the system. B. The charge on each capacitor. And C. The potential difference across each capacitor. What I want to do is expand the definition of some of these variables. So this uh, variable C1, I'm going to expand that and call it C1A. And this uh, I'm going to call C1B. And the combined, uh, the combined capacitance of both of those, I'm going to call that either C1 or C1EQ. Then likewise at the, at the bottom, this is going to be C2A and this is going to be C2B. And the combined capacitance of both of them would either be C2 or C2EQ. So C1A is 1 microfarad, C1B is 6 microfarad. So I'm going to try to uh, add up all the capacitance. So this top portion is in a series, and for a series you get 1 over, uh, 1 over CEQ, or in this case 1 over C1EQ, is going to be equal to 1 over C1A plus 1 over C1B. So in order to find C1EQ, C1 EQ, it's going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to 1 over 1 plus 1 over 6 to the negative 1 power. So basically I'm adding them up first and then I'm taking the inverse. So C1 EQ should equal approximately 0 0.85, 0 0.857. And then do, I'll do the same thing for C2EQ. So both of those are 2, so C2EQ will equal 1 half plus 1 half to the negative 1. And 1 half plus 1 half is 1. The inverse of 1 is equal to 1. So now I have two capacitors that are parallel, essentially. So what I've broken that down into now is basically I have two equivalent capacitors that are in, that are in, um, in parallel with each other. Let me uh, make this, trying to draw this correctly, and I've, I've messed it up. So basically I have this C1 EQ and this C2 EQ, and all i got to do to find the equivalent, the equivalent capacitance of both of those is just to add them together. And so I get 1 plus 0 0.857, so 1.857. Now let me add some further definitions. The charge on... C1A I'm going to call Q1A and the charge on C1B I'll call Q1B and likewise Q2A and Q2B. So to carry those numbers over this would be Q, uh, I'm, I'm looking for Q1A and I'm looking for Q2B and the 6 I'm looking for Q1B and Q2A. But now it's asking us for the charge. We're going to do the potential difference actually first. And so we're going to have the same naming structure for that. Now, here's the thing with a with a series circuit. So the circuit like we have right here, the the uh charge from series 1A is going to equal the charge of series 2 or uh, 1B. And so these these charges should equal. The problem is the the potential difference does not. So the way that works is the total potential difference is equal to the potential difference from capacitor the first capacitor in the series 1A plus the potential difference from 1B. So we have two unknown variables and we have to get rid of one of them. So let's go ahead and, and define uh, two more equations. So we'll say that Q1A is equal to uh, the, the capacitance at 1A, which we have given to us in the problem, times the, the potential difference of 1A. And then Q1B is equal to the capacitance at 1B times the potential difference at 1B. Well, now we can see from our first equation that this should be equal to this. 
because Q1A equals Q1B, I simply substitute this in for Q1A, substitute this in for Q1B. So what I get is I get that the capacitance 1A times the potential difference at 1A is equal to the capacitance is equal to the capacitance at 1 at 1B times the potential difference at 1B. So uh, now we have we still have two unknown variables. So we have the potential difference 1A and potential difference 1B. But we can use this equation to get rid of one of those unknown variables. So let's just say we want to get rid of of 1B. So we can rewrite this so that delta V is equal to, or delta V, let's see, delta V minus delta V uh, 1A is equal to delta V 1B. So now we can just replace delta V minus delta V 1A in for delta V 1B over here and we have the same thing. We, we re reduce it down to just one unknown variable. So I've got the capacitance at 1A times the potential difference at 1A is equal to the capacitance at 1B times the potential difference of the battery minus the, the potential difference at 1A. So now my equation only has one unknown variable. That's the potential difference at 1a. I just have to regroup and rewrite this to solve for delta v 1a. Now I could show you every step. If you want to know every step, leave me a, a message in the comments of the blog, not of the YouTube channel, not of the YouTube video. Leave me a message in the comments of my blog, and I will, I will show you all the steps. But here's basically what we get. The potential, the potential uh, difference at 1A is equal to the capacitance at 1A divided by the capacitance at 1B times delta V plus 1 over delta V, all of this to the negative 1 power. Now all we got to do is throw in our numbers. So C1A, remember, was one fair one uh, microfarad. Uh, capacitance at 1B was six uh, six microfarads. The voltage on the battery is 90, and then again 90. So throw all that together, and you should get that the potential difference at 1A is equal to 77.14 eight six volts now we could go all the way back through that for uh, the potential difference at 1b but so we don't need to because of this equation right here now that we've solved what 1a is and the battery tells us what the potential difference of the whole battery is is 90 so 90 uh, we just solve for 1b again which we actually we already did right here so it's 90 minus 77.14286. And so the potential difference at 1B is going to be equal to uh, 12 point, so 12.85714. So I'm going to go ahead and write my numbers in. So I got 77 point, uh, I'll just put 77.1 there. Uh, and then I got uh, 12. Point eight right here. Now there's probably about three ways to go from here and solving the potential difference on here and we're just going to do the fastest way. C2A uh, and C2B have the exact same capacitance and they're hooked up in a series. So with the idea that delta V has to equal uh, delta V uh, 2A plus delta B plus delta V to B, we're going to say since the capacitances are equal, the voltages have to be equal, the potential differences have to be equal. So if V1A equals V1B, then delta V is equal to 2 times delta V2A. Or another way to say that is that delta V2A is equal to 1 half 
of the potential difference of the battery. And so what's one half of 90? It's 45. So it's 45. And we actually just got really lucky because they are the same. If we, they weren't the same, we would have had to go all the way back through what we just did to get the, the first set. And now figuring out the charge from this point is very easy because the charge, so the charge is, uh, I don't know, I put char uh, said charge, so the capacitance is equal to the charge divided by the volt the, the potential difference. And so the capacitance 1A is going to be equal to the uh, charge at 1A over the potential difference of 1A. And so if I just multiply this by the, by the capacitance, I'll solve for the charge. Remember the capacitance at 1A is 1, microfar oh, yeah, one microfarad. And the capacitance uh, and the, the, the potential difference was 77.1. So 1 times 77.1 is equal to... 77.1 so 77.1 now something else is going to happen that, that probably shouldn't happen uh, except that the person who designed this question designed it very well to make it simple um, and almost to throw you off like I saw the answer and I thought it must have been wrong but let's go to the capacitor, uh, this, this uh, capacitor, and calculate its charge. So we said that its potential difference was 12.8, and we know what the capacitance is, it's 6. So 6 times 12.8 to get the potential, uh, to get the charge, and that is 77.1. And so I saw that and I thought, wait, that's the first number I got. I must have re-entered the first number uh, unconsciously or something. Okay, the next one, the capacitance is 2. And the, the uh, potential difference is 4.5. I'm sorry, it's 45. So 2 times 45. And the charge is going to give a... The, it's going to be a charge of 90 microcoulombs. And... This one over here had the same charge and the same potential difference, so it's going to be a charge of 90 microcoulombs. Hey, listen, I really do appreciate that you watched this entire video because I've looked at my stats on YouTube, and most of you don't watch the whole thing. You fast forward to the, to the solution of the problem, which is, you know, A equals B plus C or whatever and then you just plug in your numbers to figure out what the answer is so I, I look at my stats so those of you that really did watch this whole thing thanks a lot leave your comments especially leave your comments on my blog I don't really read my YouTube comments as often as I read my blog comments so if you have a question or something I can I can answer that question if you leave it on the blog